Hi, it's Miss Brittany from the Carbondale Branch Library, and this is our Growing Readers Together Take and Make workshop. Today, our focus will be on writing. Growing Readers Together, or GRT, as you may hear me refer to it um, in the video, is a grant supported by the Buell Foundation in partnership with Colorado State Libraries. Its focus is on providing early literacy education to family, friend, and neighbor caregivers. So if you're one of those and providing care for a child in your home, these videos and activities are for you. We're gonna jump right into the presentation. I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, so like I said, today our focus is on writing. Um, all of these workshops uh, focus on one of the early literacy practices as defined in Every Child Ready to Read, which is the standard that we use um, in our story times. So we're gonna jump right on in. What is early literacy? So early literacy is what children know about reading and writing before they actually read or write. You'll also hear us refer to this maybe as pre-reading or pre-writing skills. Why is early literacy important? Children introduced to reading early on tend to read earlier and excel in school compared to children who are not exposed to language and books at a young age. Developing early literacy skills makes it easier for children to learn to read. Children who enter schools with these skills have an advantage that carries on with them throughout their school years. So decisions you're making with them as early as infancy um, ripples throughout their years in school all the way to 18. So we're going to overview the six early literacy skills. These are more technical. This is something that as librarians we have training on and we use to create our story time. So we're going to go through them, but it's going to be much more simple because uh, we're going to focus on the practices, not the skills in these workshops. So first is print awareness. So noticing print everywhere and knowing how a book works and understanding that print has meaning and is useful. So it's as simple as learning to open up a book and turn the pages, but also noticing print like in the grocery store or on billboards that it's everywhere and that it connects to language. Print motivation, taking an interest in and enjoying books. That's why it's always so important to read books that the kids are interested in and that they enjoy, even if they ask you to read it 50 times in a row. Um, it's also important that you share books with your ch children or the kids in your care that you enjoy and that excitement will bleed through as you're reading. Letter knowledge, the ability to recognize and name letters and produce the sounds they make. So starting with the alphabet, of course. Um, vocabulary, knowing the names of things and understanding the meanings of words. So not only seeing an apple, but knowing that it connects to the word apple and to the letters A-P-P-L-E that spells apple. Um, phonological awareness is a fancy word that I like to say it's for rhyming, um, but it's being able to hear and play with the smaller sounds and words. So the phonemes and to hear and use rhyme. So singing is really important for this because it breaks down words into smaller parts. Narrative skills and an ability to understand and tell stories and describe events. Some kids learn this really, really early on and are great storytellers. But it's not as complicated as all that because we are, like I said, focusing on the five early literacy practices, which is reading, writing, talking, singing, and playing. So much more fun than, say, phonological awareness, but it all ties in together. Um, and today we're focusing, of course, on writing, but we'll go through them all. The first one, read anytime, anywhere. Reading together or shared reading remains the single most effective way to help children become proficient readers. Later on in these workshops, Miss Amy will go over reading with you. It's super important. And that's why we love story time so much. Uh, writing, practicing with pencils, scribbling with crayons. Writing and reading go together. Writing helps children learn that letters and words stand for sounds and that print has meaning. Talking about anything and everything. Talking with children helps them learn oral language, one of the most critical early literacy skills. So don't always use the smaller words with your kids. Sometimes it's better to use a bigger word they might not have heard before and help describe it to them. Singing in the car, in the tub. Even if you're tone deaf like moi, <laughs> it's really important to sing and you can do it too. So songs are a natural way to learn about language. They help develop listening skills and slow down language so children can hear the different sounds in words, a key decoding skill. And last, 
play, be silly, be active. The most fun one, I think. Play is one of the primary ways young children learn about the world. General knowledge is an important literacy skill that helps children understand books and stories once they begin to read. So using puppets and costumes and acting out the stories you read is really, really important for play. So we'll jump right back into writing. So reading and writing go together. Both are ways to represent the spoken word. Writing goes through stages from light markings to letter-like forms, to drawing letters, to forming them. Writing helps children understand that print has meaning. When children scribble and then say what it means, they are understanding that what they have written or drawn means something. So if they draw a cat, say, what is that? And they'll tell you it's a cat, and then they're connecting those two things. The beginning of writing for very young children is learning how to use their hands and fingers so that later they will hold crayons and pencils. And we're gonna jump right into those skills, which are um, writing begins with developing gross and fine motor skills. So those are the two kinds essential for learning how to grip and hold onto a crayon or a pencil and eventually write. Gross motor skills are movements related to larger muscles, so the arms and the legs and the core and the head and the neck and all that. Fine motor skills are movements involving, involving smaller muscle groups, so the hands and the wrist. I did that opposite, but the wrist, the hands. Okay, and here's a, a very simple way to develop gross motor skills very early on. Um, did you know that switching Baby's direction each night can help develop their neck and core muscles. This doesn't mean you need to move their crib. Just alternate the direction they sleep in their crib each night. This way, each morning, when they look up to see your smiling face, they will use different muscles to pick up and turn their head. I really love this image because it's a really simple way to do this. On odd days, face your baby this way, and on even days, face your baby that way. And these are your fine motor skills, but the first one deals with both, with both gross and fine motor skills. So that's why it's such a great activity. And that is the um, plastic egg music shakers or any type of shaker. Um, you can also use a water bottle filled with pasta or beans during play, shake it from side to side to encourage baby to look in different directions. This game stimulates baby's hearing and like the way that you switch the baby in the crib, it helps build their neck and their hip muscles. Um, as baby gets older, you can use smaller plastic containers like an egg, like an Easter egg, so baby can shake and hold it themselves. So as they get older, they're developing their fine motor skills by actually manipulating the shaker themselves. The next is the baby container surprise or mystery box, which sounds scary, but it's not. You can stuff some squares of fabric into a baby wipe container and let the baby pull them out. Fabric should have different textures and colors to stimulate sense of touch and vision. So they're using their grip when they reach in to grab different things and the different textures help with sensory. Both really fun activities that you've probably seen me use in story time as well. Next, we're gonna go over some very basic pre-writing and writing milestones. Um, I wanna be clear that these are very um, generic and that if your baby's not exactly where they need to be or toddler exactly where it says, don't get too concerned. You can always speak with your doctor, but these are just very general milestones. So um, 12 to 18 months, children should typically be able to imitate scribbles on a piece of paper with a thick marker. So they're not there yet, maybe with a regular crayon or pencil, but one of those jumbo, jumbo markers, or um, there's some crayons that are shaped like eggs or different shapes that really help them grip when they're younger. So you're just gonna see abstract scribbles at this point. And then from 19 to 24 months, it'll start to look more like a shape and a line. So children should typically be able to imitate vertical strokes, horizontal strokes, and circles on a piece of paper. It's still going to look pretty abstract at this um, milestone. Um, two and a half to three years, children should typically be able to accurately copy vertical lines, horizontal lines, and circles. So everything's gonna get a little cleaner, a little clearer for you to understand what it is. And then from four to five years, children should typically be able to copy a cross, a square, triangle, and an X. So they're really learning their shapes at this point. Um, this is also when the, the age to begin pr practicing the formation of the letters in your child's names. So once they get down the shapes, they're really ready to move on to the letters. And um, 
like I said, milestones, some kids are actually pretty advanced and can start this a little bit earlier. So like I said, general milestones. Okay, and here are some more fun early literacy tips for writing. So draw a picture of an animal and then ask what sound does it make? So if you draw a cow and they say moo, and then you can write cow underneath it so they're connecting the word cow with the image of a cow. Um, they can also draw the picture and then next write a child's name and point out the sound of the first letter. So I'm Miss Brittany, so I put Brittany. I'd point out the B and the shape of the B and go B for Brittany. Have children draw a picture and tell you about it. Add a new word or two to what the children are saying or clarify meanings of words they are using. So as they're talking, throw in some more vocabulary or help to find things that maybe they're saying but they might not understand. Um, so you're really incorporating a lot of early literacy practices in that. There's some narrative skill. Um, there's some talking in that and writing, of course. Practice drawing shapes and letters and sand, shaving cream, or rice. Another fun sensory activity, something I use in story time that I love. If you have a sensory table, if you have a cookie sheet, fill it with um, any sort of fun texture, shaving cream, sand, whatever. They can trace shapes, pictures, letters. It really adds a fun element to um, learning to write. And they're also still using their fine letter skills. So really important. And then have children draw pictures for a story and write what they say. So they're illustrating the story and then you're writing beside the pictures um, what it actually is so they can connect the two things. It's all very easy things to do at home. Okay, and here are some fun books you can get. Um, you can either purchase them. A lot of them are available at the library or through Prospector um, on our catalog. One of my favorite is Eating the Alphabet by Lois Ellert. It's a really fun one. It's an alphabetical tour of the world of fruits and vegetables from apricot and artichoke to yam and zucchini. So it's building um, vocabulary of foods that they might not always see written down and know the words for. Okay, next one is Creature ABC by Andrew Zuckerman. And Zuckerman uses his gorgeous animal photography to introduce the alphabet. Next is Write on Carlos by Stuart Murphy. And with his mother's help, Carlos learns to write his name as some of his friends can do. So I always like to start with their names because it's a word they're really the most interested in at an early age. Next is Old Black Fly by Jim Ellsworth. And this is a classic. It is rhyming text and illustrations follow a mischievous old black fly through the alphabet as he has a very busy bad day landing where he should not be. <laughs> And last one is gorgeous. It's Alpha Beasties and Other Amazing Types by Sharon Warner. And this is using different fonts and typefaces. To um, This amazing book features animals created by letters. So even on the cover, you can see that that alligator um, is made of A's and the zebra is made of Z's. It's a really amazing book for learning the alphabet. Okay, I'm gonna turn off my share screen so I can show you our circulating writing box. Okay. Um, all six branches have five early literacy practice kits that you can check out. This one is the writing tote. And it's full of books and activities that focus on writing. I'll put this over here. The first thing is letters ABC. When you open it up, You can see someone else had a lot of fun with this and I didn't quite get it cleaned off, but it's a dry erase marker and they're learning to trace the alphabet. The other pages should be better. There we go. So it does come with this black dry erase marker, but also some dry erase crayons that are really, really fun too. Next, we have a fun little dog puppet. And this is actually also incorporating play because like I said, all of those practices kind of go together. So it's really fun to put them all. So this is a dog is going to go with one of our books. Can I be your dog? So it's fun to use this when you're reading Can I be your dog? Next we have Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. So essential for learning the alphabet with the recording. So let's add some songs, some phonological awareness in with our Chicka Chicka Boom Boom. That's a fun one. This, you can use that dog puppet, like I said, with this book, Can I Be Your Dog by Troy Cummings. Very heartfelt and kind of sad, but a great book. It has a happy ending. One day, short, very short, shorter than ever stories. This is a fun one. And 
a squiggly story. So we're learning that our scribbles can eventually turn into forming letters. That's by Andrew Larson. And then this is my book by Mark Pett. And another fun part of these kits is that everyone comes with a bilingual Growing Readers Together information sheet. So a lot of the things we talked about in our workshop today will be in this sheet. And yeah, bilingual too. So really good. And the most important, well, I think one of the most important parts of the workshop shops is that these take and make kits go hand in hand with them. So today we talked about writing and how to build that at home, but you can actually stop into any of the six branches. We have a limited supply, so once this premieres, you can stop in and grab one of these kits. It'll be in a purple bag. The writing kit comes with a cookie sheet. Some laminated sheets that you can use. Okay. And there are a lot of fun activities in it. You also get, you also get alphabet magnets with each kit. The first activity, you should all have these sheets that are squares with these um, images and words on them, and you're going to cut them out. And since this is a kit I'm actually handing out, I'm not going to cut this, but you can see that you would just cut it into the squares. And then we would place our rhyming laminated down on our cookie sheet so it's front and back. So I would say I placed this one on there. We have cat and we have moat. It might be turned around for you. Then you would use, you would have the kid, you would cut out the squares and then the kid or child would find the, one of the images and place it down that rhymes with that word. So for cat, they would put rat and they would just place it right on the board. There are other laminated sheets that have words and they can use their little fun alphabet magnets to spell out the words. You could also have them put down all the magnets in order of the alphabet, so they're ABCs in order, and you can check their work. There's a sheet that goes with it that has the alphabet with missing letters, so they could fill in the missing letters with their magnets. And not included, but also fun, you could use this as um, like the sensory activity we talked about. So you could fill it with sand or shaving cream or rice, and they could trace. They could use the sheets for reference on how to spell, or you could also put the magnets along the top of the cookie sheet, and then they trace in the shaving cream underneath it. So there, we really love this activity because there are so many ways that you can use it. Not a lot of prep and very easy. Um, so like I said, they're available at all six branches. To pick up the day that this video premieres, you can always give us a call if you're interested. Um, and this is going to go along with all of the workshops. There'll be a different activity. And I uh, thank you for listening today, and I hope you learned a lot. See you soon. Bye.